the mint julep cocktail is the quintessential Kentucky drink. They serve hundreds of thousands of these things at the Kentucky Derby, and James and I thought it would be awesome if we could try and put together a mint julep beer. Cheers. Now, the question is, you can put beer in the cocktails, but can you make a beer that tastes like a mint julep? But I think it'd be fantastic to try and emulate these flavors in a beer. See this guy in the front here? Winston Churchill. Abraham Lincoln. Is it? Where's he from? Louisville. Five Bones says you cannot make a mint julep beer. I'll take your $5, and I bet we can. For 35 years, Bill Doan and his tiny 10-acre family farm, Doan & Doan Gardens, has had a huge job, supplying the Kentucky Derby with all the top quality mint they need to make 150,000 mint juleps on race day. Wow, it's like a carpet of mint. So Bill, what makes Kentucky mint so special? I think probably our climate has something to do with it. We've got the limestone water here in, in Kentucky that they use for the bourbon, and it also helps to grow nice quality mint, good flavorful mint. Bill, this spearmint is going to be perfect for going into our beer, but I think we're going to need a lot more. Well, let's get cutting. You know, you're getting pretty good at this. It's actually quite difficult. Do, do you have a job? Uh, so it's a bit like making a fine tea. We want all the aromatics of the mint to sit in the wort. Oh, it actually smells a little bit like a mint julep, minus the bourbon. We're gonna use this Marisotter malt that we got. It goes really well with our Kentucky water. A really high calcium water in here in Kentucky that allows us to make great beer and also great bourbon, shall we? And that's a perfect malt for making this beer because we want some of that honey flavor, similar to some of the honey flavors we're getting in the bourbon. That's right. So our next malts are gonna be crystal malts. It'll give us a nice color, nice caramel flavor, just like bourbon. Finally, for just a little bit of color and a little bit of roasty flavor, roasted barley. So it's a very straightforward grain bill we've got for this wee heavy. Ab absolutely very simple. Over the last 200 years, Buffalo Trace has weathered disasters from flooding to prohibition to become the most award-winning distillery in the world. Today, the guys are lucky to have Freddie Johnson, a third-generation Buffalo Trace guide, to lead them on their quest. And how long has this cask been aging for, Freddie? This one has been around for almost 10 years. Buffalo Trace runs about nine years old. Steady. This whiskey tastes phenomenal. Molasses, burnt sugar, caramel, hints of mint. You'll notice that vanilla kind of like jumps out at you. And I think we've definitely got to use this one, the classic Buffalo Trace. We're taking these two casks. You've got it. All Thank right. You. So now what we're going to do is we're going to back off on the corn. We're going to increase the amount of rye, and we're going to taste Sazerac. Since you have some bourbon in your hands, I'm going to give you the opportunity to really taste the difference between a straight rye and a rye recipe bourbon. I've got pretty much the same kind of color, but the nose is entirely different. Now the rye jumps out at you. It's more about the kind of spice, eucalyptus, the punch, peppermint. It really has, for me, a bit more complexity than the Buffalo Trace. Although we want to make a mint and julep beer, I think having a portion of these casks being from rye whiskey will really add another dimension into the beer that we're making. Oh, yes. And now we're gonna play with a little bit of pappy. One of the most famous, one of the most revered, one of the most sought after whiskies on the planet. We're tasting it straight from the oak with a third generation distiller at Buffalo Trace. And we're actually going to probably drink the whole cask. Oh, we're definitely going to do that. We're now at 23 years in the barrel, the oldest wheated bourbon in the country. The notes are going to be softer and smoother as they strike the palate, but the flavors will drive you out the roof. I may get banished from my own homeland for saying this, but this is the best whiskey I've ever tasted. Oh, there it goes. And already it's coming out from this one, filling the cask below and going into the cask below that. Once we've got all the wort transferred in, we're going to spin it around, we're going to oxygenate it, we're going to use this to cool down the wort and infuse the spirit of bourbon into this beer. David, start it up. Hold your breath. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We have liftoff. Wow. Uh, wow, David. <laughs> awesome. David, it's beautiful. 
the casks are heavily charred in the inside, and you see those little bits of char the beer's picking up. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to filter this before we serve it. Nine, ten. For full throttle, gentlemen, full throttle. So all we really need to do now is let it spin in these casks for the next two hours and then transfer it into the final cask for fermentation. I think my work here is done. I am ready for a bourbon. I think you, you deserve it. See you later. We're going to stand here for the next two hours and watch you go around in circles. I'm going to sit here for the next two hours. And malt. Was it the best mint julep beer you've ever tasted? It's the only mint julep beer I've ever tasted. So it was also the worst mint julep beer you've ever tasted. Good. I don't know about the notes or anything like that at all, but I think it's a really good beer. I like the mint julep. This is better. 